Well, check out what I have right now. This is a nice Sansui, probably from the early 80s, I'd say, based on a couple of things. Pulse encoded tuning down here, digital display, just by the way this thing looks. So let's power this thing on. Okay, I do have a station tuned. It is working, but I'm gonna switch this over to auxiliary so we don't have to get a copyright strike, but check this out. There's the volume level indicator right there. I get no change whatsoever when I work the volume up or down. And once again, back to FM, it is working. I do show an LED right here and it does actually tune as I move the stations up and down. It tells me when I'm tuned correctly. And so that part is working just fine. but I cannot control the volume on this thing. Maybe that's the only issue. This has some kind of a spectrum analyzer over here, but it's not working and the knob is missing. Oh, I saw a little flick. Speaker switches are working. Oh no. That's not good. Well, let's go ahead and tear this thing apart and see what it looks like inside. Okay, so I got the top off, looking around inside, and right there is the volume control motor. Look at that, but let's go ahead and just take a peek around this thing before we get too deep into this. There's probably what is the spectrum analyzer. And then this is one thing, let's not gloss over that big old beefy power transformer, look at the size of that thing. This is one thing I do not like. Panasonic used these. In fact, this looks exactly like the ones that Panasonic used. It's actually a tube and it has some kind of refrigerant in it so it conducts the heat very, very effectively. But these things would spring a little leak down here where it's been swedged and welded or even on the other end. And I can't even see the other end on that one. And then it would be just a hollow copper pipe and it would not exchange any heat from the transistors into the fins whatsoever. Uh, if anybody knows exactly what's going on or what type of refrigerant, whether it's like maybe R12, R134, or some kind of ammonia, I'm not sure what's going on, but I can tell by looking at the power amplifier on this thing, that channel right there does look original, and this channel has an ECG and an SK output transistor in it. Way to go, whoever fixed this thing, matching those transistors. Good job, good job. Got to give you a definite high five. And let's see who that might have been. So there's quite a distinct possibility. It was Gene Betts TV VCR on Watt Avenue in North Highlands, which is part of Sacramento, California. Now that's about 100 miles from me right here. I've been on Watt Avenue many, many times in my lifetime. And you can see the date on that thing, 923 of 91. Well, I wasn't here in 91. I was in Southern California in the city of Orange doing VCR TV and stereo repairs down there. So anyhow, that's where we're at. So let's get a voltmeter hooked up to this thing and try to see if voltage is getting to the motor or if we have some kind of a driver circuit failure. And it even has a little dial cord down here that moves the little pointer up or down. And we'll figure out what's going on momentarily. Okay, here we go. I have an ohm meter connected to the motor and the power to the unit is off right now. So I'm just going to put it in the ohm range and see if we get a few ohms because we should have five or 10 ohms on this motor, maybe 20 at the most. And I see 0.922 mega ohms, which is 922,000 ohms. That's not good. So let's go ahead and put it back in volts and I will put it in the 60 volt range. I'm gonna power the unit on and press the volume up and down buttons and see what we get. Volume up, I get negative 8.4 volts. Volume down, and I get positive 8.4 volts. So that tells me that the motor is in fact bad. I would say it might be stalled, but because of the 900,000 ohm range, that's not the case. So I guess the next step is to see if I can even get this motor out and get it disassembled and clean the commutator and the stator in it and see if we can bring this thing back to life somehow. Okay, well I managed to get the motor out. 
got it unsoldered. I left the filter cap on it that reduces the RFI from the brush making and breaking contact. So I think we can just kind of unpin these four tabs and get this end bell off of the motor. But I want to try to get the gear off first. So the most effective way that I know how to get it off is to just take a little pair of pliers, grab the shaft and give it a little help and it pulls right off. Because the way most of these motors are designed, if you just pull the end bell off, you might destroy the commutator and the brushes. So you wanna actually try to unpin these things and push the shaft through. So I'm hoping that I can just kind of give these things a little pry. I may have to use some pliers, which a lot of times is the case. Oh man, this one's got a thick case too. No, let me work on it in a minute. I'll be right back. It may not be the nicest job in the world, but I think I can go ahead and push that off. And then while keeping tension, we'll go ahead and pull the motor completely out of here. And then we'll try to release the brushes safely and pull the commutator out and see if we can actually do any repairs or is it a lost cause? All right, so I got the brushes, if you wanna call them brushes, tucked back between their little tabs back here so they won't have any damage. And then there is the commutator. And I think just based on how nasty this thing is, that's gonna be the whole problem. We can probably just go ahead and give it a spit shine with some acetone and maybe a piece of paper just to get rid of all that crud that's on there. But I think we're gonna be good because I'm not really seeing any defects over here in the windings whatsoever. They actually look really, really good. So I think if I can just clean this thing up, we're gonna be good to go. Okay, the motor is kind of swedged back together. I did make a mark right there in the plastic where this little notch is in the motor frame. Went ahead and knocked those back in. All the way around, so the base is solid in the motor right now. I did power it up previously, but I'll go ahead and give it one more final test. And I went ahead and put a piece of tape on it so that we could actually see it turning. So I have it at 1.72 volts right now. And it's running very slowly. So there's four volts. And then there is eight volts. Okay, I think we're good. 1.3 volts and the thing is still running very, very slowly. So I'm very happy with that. If it had a bad spot in the commutator, it would be dead by now. 
Well, let's go ahead and put it back together. But first, I want to try to clean that volume pot because I think that thing is going to be severely oxidized. So with the motor disconnected, I can actually run the volume pot, which is connected to the screw right here. You can see the leads for it right there. I can run it up and down right there. So let's go ahead and spray some fader F5 into this thing. We'll run it up and down several times. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and put it back together and see if we get better results. Okay, here we go. Let's power this thing up and we'll press the volume buttons and see if we get a response. And we do. Look at that. Working perfect. Well, let's hook up some audio right now. Make sure the volume pot is actually okay, that it does not need to be replaced. Okay, here we go. Volume is at minimum right now. Oh, it's working perfect. That is absolutely excellent. Well, what about the other pots? Remember the balance? Yeah, that's bad. Trouble? Just as bad, a lot of crackles, bass. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that thing needs to be cleaned really bad. Well, let's go ahead and shoot the other pots with some Deoxit F5. And we'll get this thing finished up and shipped back to the customer. All right, got it all nice and cleaned up, washed the front. Power LEDs are working. Spectrum analyzer is working just fine. Although it doesn't like to sync with the phone. Tuner's working great. All the controls and switches. Are working absolutely perfect now. Anyhow, that's it. The repair on the Sensui. Pretty nice receiver from the early 80s. If somebody offered this to me, I certainly wouldn't turn it down. Got the volume control up and running once again. Anyhow, I certainly hope you enjoyed the video on the repair on the Sansui. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I'll try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. If you do contact me on social media, please be aware it might be weeks or even months before I get a chance to respond. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.